All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. Today we're going to take a look at being more aggressive in coverage. And what I mean by that is changing up some of your looks, playing a little bit more man, maybe than you're used to, and I'll give you my opinion on why you should be doing that. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, the sideline replay system we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them for the last probably five or six years now. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, great customer service, make sure you check out Game Strat. Dome Headwear, which is the hat company we use, Bishop Kenny High School, uh, play fast football. I've used Dome probably the last 10 years or ever since they've been in business. Uh, local guys for us here in Northeast Florida, I actually coached against uh, one of the owners, uh, Jeff Whitaker, when he was a quarterback in high school. So I like being loyal to people that are in the game, people that used to be coaches. Completely customizable, design your own hat, they have a great online hat builder. If you want custom, if you want people that take care of coaches, make sure you check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods, it's the uh, company we use for our coaches gear, players gear, sideline gear, practice gear. Our uniforms are distributed through uh, Baker Sporting Goods. We have team stores, fan stores, things that we do with teachers and all of our other sports here as well. Get all of your, everything you need, one convenient location, all right, so that you don't have to use 18 vendors. You can put all your money into one vendor to get the things you need. Check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, which is the playbook software we use. I just had somebody reach out to me on Twitter yesterday asking about Just Play. Highly recommend it if you need a playbook. Uh, it's the best play drawing tool on the market. We use it for installs. We use it for team presentations. Uh, obviously, playbooks, you can... Uh, it's got a unique way of quizzing players on playbooks and game plans using diagrams, videos, so make sure you check out Just Play. And then Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Um, you get thousands of reps without needing a partner. They, they can set up right in your, in your weight room, right on your racks. All right, you're working on all the things that you need to become better strikers. 21 of the 22 players on the field at some point in the play are probably going to have to strike somebody, so why not work on it in the offseason? And I was shocked to find out that less than 4% of high schools all right, are, are using Difference USA, which to me in high school, the amount of time that we have with our players, not needing to change the drill with bags and who's holding the bag, not having to teach a kid how to hold the bag. You get a drill where you can work on striking, you can work on an in-season, out-of-season, right in your weight room. Make sure you check out Difference USA. All right, so why are we talking about being more aggressive in coverage? So let's think about what we normally look at on defense, right? So normally we talk about, hey, we've got to limit explosive plays. We've got to keep the ball inside and in front. In front. We've got to play with great leverage, right? We've got to all right, limit the deep ball. Those are all things that usually for, you know, for the longest time on defense, things that we've always talked about, right, when we're trying to play good defense. But I think what we need to look at now is the landscape of the game and how it's changing. So if you look at the NFL, all right, and, and a lot of things trickle down from the NFL. I've always said on this channel, and people that follow me, I watch college football more than I watch NFL football because I think college football is more conducive to our style of play. But I still think that a lot of things in the game trickle down from the NFL. Sometimes they trickle up from college, like with athletic quarterbacks and defending zone read and things that the NFL is not used to doing. But I think a lot of the concepts trickle down. And when you look at the passing game in the NFL, what you're starting to see now is a, is, is a really a growing trend of balls thrown less than 10 to 12 yards. All right, so you look at a lot of quarterbacks. I think I read a stat on, on uh, Herbert from, from, um, from the Chargers, and he threw for over 4,000 yards this year, 4,500 or something like that. And a lot of his completions were under 7 yards in the air. So the ball is in the air under 7 yards. The number of passes that are thrown at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage is increasing. All right, the number of passes that are thrown under 10 yards is increasing and on the rise. All right, so what has happened is offenses are going to more controlled spacing style passing attacks. Not that they haven't always been out there, but what you don't see as much anymore is the teams that just chunk, chunk, chunk the ball down the field, right? And one of the things that you've got to go back and look at is chart your opponents that you're playing. And as a high school defensive coordinator, just go throughout the season and chart the number of balls completed that go 10 to 15 yards down the field or more, all right, especially from the pocket, all right, so bootlegs, waggles, scrambles, sprint outs, things like that where guys are throwing comebacks and maybe corner routes or things like that where quarterbacks are out of the pocket on the move. I'm talking about pocket passing. Chart the amount of times that a high school quarterback stands in a pocket and completes passes more than 10 yards down the line of scrimmage. And what I think you're going to find, more often than not, again, it's a game of percentages, right? We're talking about playing percentages. More often than not, what you're, what you're going to find, excuse me, is quarterbacks in high school from the pocket don't complete those throws, right? So I think about a ball in, in high school in 23 years of coaching defense. 
all right, or, or coaching high school football as a head coach or offense or defense coordinator. This is our offense and our defense. In 23 years, the, the, probably the number one ball that I rarely see completed in high school is the 12 to 15 yard dig route, all right, or the dagger concept, or what you know, whatever it may be, whatever you consider a dig route, whether it's number two, number one, doesn't matter to me, whether it's post over dig, I rarely see from the pocket 12 to 15 yard digs completed, even 10 yard digs, okay? It's just, the more you chart it, the more you look at it, you don't see those throws completed from the pocket. Now, whether, is that a quarterback thing? Is that a protection thing? Is that a timing thing? They don't have the time and protection to get the ball or drive the ball that far down the field. Is that an arm strength thing? Is it a philosophy thing? Who knows what it is? All I know is when I chart and go back and look at things, all right, like when I look at us on defense this past year, we gave up very few throws over 20 yards. Now, was it anything we really did different? I don't think we did much different. We played three high safety, so maybe we had more speed on the field. Okay, but at the corner and the safety position, coverage-wise, the only thing we did a little bit differently than I've done in the past is we mixed in more combination man coverages and we played more traditional cover two than I have in the past. So as far as the deep ball is concerned, we didn't really practice defending deep balls more. Now, we spent a lot of time and effort on, on trying to finish violently through the hands, all right, and trying to finish plays where maybe you're beaten coverage, but you have a chance to make a play and disrupt the catch. So teaching kids how to finish plays, how to finish when a ball is up, how we should be finishing, how to finish when a ball is down, the things we should be doing, not to be counterproductive and, you know, when a ball's up, you don't want to be all the time swatting down at it. You'd rather go up and through the hands when a ball's down. All right, you don't want to go up through the hands, you'd rather go down through the hands. So looking at different ways to disrupt catches, being violent and physical through the hands, through the finish, getting guys to finish. But we really didn't focus on defending deep balls more. Okay, and again, more speed on the field maybe. All right, but I think it's because offenses don't really throw deep balls as much anymore. And when you really think about it as far as percentage passing, yes, we want to keep the ball inside and front. Yes, we want to play with great leverage. Yes, we want to limit explosive plays. But at the same time, we also want to take away the things that the offense wants to do. That's our job as a defense. Right? So when you look across the NFL now, you're starting to see all these offenses that are creating space. They're creating matchups. All right? They are finding ways to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. There's a list in the NFL of five or six guys absolutely don't blitz because when you blitz them, they handle the blitz and the ball gets out of their hand. So now... You know, in, 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 on defense now, you're starting to see teams trying to generate pressure with four while dropping seven, getting more guys in throwing lanes. You still don't see an, an increase in three-man rushes in the NFL. Three-man rushes on drop-back downs is still probably less than 6% or 7% of snaps in the NFL. I'm not a crazy numbers junkie, but I know enough. All right, so it's not that you're seeing an influx of drop eight. Yes, there's probably drop eight out there. Yes, there's maybe a higher percentage of drop eight than there used to be. But that's not the answer either. The answer in the NFL has been a lot of the Sims and the Creepers and deals where let's send four, but let's get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. What does the offense try to do? They try to create matchups, right? When you think about all these great receivers, I talked last week about tempo offenses. They've got to create matchups by changing guys where they line up, stacks and bunches and getting their, you know, our best on your less, right? Well, it's the same thing with us on defense. Let's get Aaron Donald one-on-one -on -one with a guard. So if we can simulate the way a center has to turn to get Aaron Donald one-on-one -on -one with a guard or some of the best pass rushers in the game, dominant inside guys one-on-one -on -one with a guard, that's what we want. If we can get a backer on a back, that's what we want, right? But we also want to cover because the old days of send five, man free, whatever it may be, all right, um, or playing man under too deep, right? If the ball's not being thrown more than 10 yards down the field on, a, on, a, on most down statistically, why do we have to worry about two deep players? Because we want to defend a deep ball. We want to defend a post. We want to cover over the top, top down, right? Yeah, we all talk about that. I still talk about that as a defense coordinator. I still tell our guys how we're trying to cover top down. But what I do is I change some of our coverages up that give us a little bit better chance, right? So I think if you look at it, offenses are throwing the ball shorter and shorter, all right? Completion percentage. Take a look. Go back. And this is a study. Every one of my followers, everybody that watches this video, Please go back and study the teams you played and, and the completion percentage of balls completed, let's say 15 yards down the field or further from the pocket. So balls that were completed 15 yards or further down the field from the pocket, all right, and I think you'll be shocked to find out what that number is. So what did we do differently uh, this year? All right, well, first thing we did, to the two receiver side, we played way more 
traditional cover two when we could. Now, why do I say when we could? Ball's in the middle of the field, all right? Perimeter runs, cover two for us isn't the greatest deal, especially, you know, middle of the field, maybe you can get away with it. Ball on a hash mark, wide side of the field, very tough to do. You're still playing with inside leverage on a number two, so you're still probably gonna get blocked inside with a Sam linebacker. And now you're in great position to force from the corner, but look how far away you are, especially in today's game with splits and what offenses are doing in today's game, right? So when we had the chance, passing down scenarios, okay, uh, ball into the boundary, middle of the field with teams that like to do this, play way more cover two than we did, challenge guys to throw the ball down the field, got up, old school, jam funnel, all right, and our corners aren't very long, so they weren't as good at it, so we went back and forth throughout the year with playing it as a squat corner, playing it off a little bit, but the bottom line is playing a corner underneath five yards and challenging throws right now. Challenge access, challenge bubble, challenge hitches, challenge out cuts, challenge all those throws, force the ball down the field. Now, our middle safety was a guy that could always play three verticals, so we were okay playing middle of the field open cover two concepts because three verticals, especially from the sniffer, RPOs, play action passes, we've got it handled, all right, with a guy that, that we think is every bit as good, if not better, of an athlete than your tight end fullback player, right? So one of the things we did, way more cover two, played it a ton to the single and to the boundary. Okay, why? All right, access, easy throws, high percentage passes. Challenge those and take those away and make the ball go down the field. Now, the first thing, especially if you're a defense coordinator, you're going to have to live with a little bit. Your head coach is going to go, oh, is this really where we want to play? Let's keep the ball inside and in front. Let's avoid the chunk plays. Let's avoid the explosives. Let's avoid the deep ball. Yeah, I get it. But let's also do the things, just flip it on your offensive guy and say, hey, what are you trying to do in a passing game? What routes are you trying to throw? What routes are you telling your quarterback you'll take till they take it away? Right? So game by game, week by week, let's look at what they do and let's take away the things that they do. Right? So way more cover two into the boundary. All right, way more cover two in the middle of the field than we ever had. Still don't play it unless it's definite passing downs that we like it against certain combinations. Still don't play it a ton from the hash mark to the field, but we played it some. All right, way more man coverages on, on two removed receivers. So way more press corner, right safety or left safety, off catch man at six yards, tighter linebackers in the box, which allowed us to play, okay, Man coverage with underneath zone integrity. So we weren't going full man concepts. We were just going man to two remove. Why? That's where the RPOs were. That's where the easy throws were. Allowed us to tuck our Sam tighter in the box because he doesn't have to worry about all right, the access throws and all those other things because we're going to challenge those men. Challenge the offense to throw the ball down the field. All right. Take away the access. Take away the RPOs if you can. All right. And... Force the offense to do something different. Force them to drop back pass. Force them to beat you with concepts. So way more man coverages, to the, especially to the two to the two removed side. All right, our percentage percentage of snaps in man to two removed went up this year a, a pretty good bunch. All right, and when I say that, I mean man on one and two with underneath zone integrity. So our Sam's drop never changed. Our middle safety's drop didn't change, and then the will is part of the single side. So on the front side, we were still trying to play four on three. We were still playing with our two underneath players between the Sam and the middle safety and distributing and matching the routes based on their distrib uh, distribution. But we were playing man on the outside. All right. We also played a bunch more man with all right, some cut coverages. So for us, it's, it's three-man rush deals. So it's man-to-man -man on five skills with your five skills. And this is what I love about... Deals like this for us are so easy to do with three high safeties because we have five skills. So when it comes down to playing this coverage, we tell our five skills to find their five skills. We gotta match up with their five skills with our five skills, right? So way more men underneath cut coverages. So this was a cut player, underneath dropper, underneath dropper, man with our skills, okay? Why did we do that? Because we wanted to challenge underneath throws, we wanted to challenge crossing routes, we wanted to challenge quick game and short throws, and we wanted to be able to have help if we got quarterback scramble because we're playing man coverage. Okay, so some of the things I think you can do on defense, I think you can challenge quick throws. I think you can show different looks to take away quick throws. The ball is now being thrown 
inside of 10 yards more often. So I think those are the things we got to work on challenging. We still play palms with outside or two read with outside leverage from the corner. Everybody asks, aren't you worried about defending the post? Well, yes, we work a ton on defending the post, but I'm also worried about having leverage on the bubble and the access throws and the quick throws because those are going to be thrown and completed way more. The post ball doesn't get completed as much as you think. All right, it makes you nervous. It's a scary deal. All right, but bottom line on defense is we've got to play on defense to alleviate some of the things that the offense is doing, right? We don't have to defend ghosts. We've got to defend what we're actually seeing. So for us, way more cover two, okay, way more man with underneath zone players, and way more true man with underneath zone players, all right? So combination man zone, so way, uh, a ton more man to the two receiver side, the two removed, with underneath zone players, all right? Five or zero coverage, all right, but not zero integrity. So five skills against their five skills, but three underneath drops. All right, three underneath droppers for us, the way we do it. All right, we drop eight more than we do because I don't think generating pressure in high school is as big of a deal as it is in college and the NFL because I think the number of quick intermediate passes in, in high school football is way higher than it is in college and the NFL. I think the ball is out quick. I think quarterbacks don't want to be in the pocket. I think offensive coordinators don't want to protect from in the pocket. So sometimes generating pressure in high school isn't the greatest deal. Now, what are they going to do in the NFL? I've already talked about it in college. Sim creeper pressure. Send four, drop seven, but get matchups to get to the quarterback. Those guys have to worry about getting to the quarterback, especially on the downs that they have to win because that ball is going to be thrown from the pocket and it's going to be thrown down the field. Okay, Just ignore it. If the bell goes off in a second, it's about to go off probably any minute uh, in the morning. So what do we need to do on defense? Challenge the offense. Challenge what they do. Play some things that you're not as comfortable playing, whether it be traditional cover two. All right, traditional cover two will challenge the number one receiver to get off press. You'll be able to get your hands on and beat some guys up. It will challenge them to throw the ball down the field in, in, in all the hole shots, right? So where are those? Sorry to get this picture, right? Five skills play man. So the way we teach it, corner has one, safety has two, middle safety has three, safety has two, corner has one, all right? And then these three guys are just what we call, I call them, cut players. You're trying to cut every underneath route, and you're playing vision and break off the cue. All right, so you're extra. You're extra players in the coverage. All right, you, you don't have to worry so much about curl flat, hook curl, where I got to get, what I got to match. You're underneath players. You're helping cut some of the underneath routes, crossing routes, quick game, trying to get bodies in windows that the offense is going to throw. Okay, so when you get back to the cover two side, so if you're up there challenging this, all right, and you've got this safety here, and you've got the Sam linebacker in there. Where's the ball going to try and go all the time? All right, you've got to be able to defend those two balls, right? Because if he rips there and he rips there, you've got an issue. Well, how do you defend that? Your corner's got to be able to jam and try and funnel this inside. Sam's got to be able to get hands on and widen that. Why? Because the two verticals you want closer to the safety, you don't want a huge stretch. All right, you don't want that stretch to be so wide for the safety that I'm ripping down the seam, I'm ripping outside the numbers, and now those two balls can be thrown, right? So that, those are the balls they're going to throw. Well, guess what? This one for certain, okay? This one for certain, QBs don't complete often. Go back and chart the games. Find a number of 16 to 18-yard fade balls in a window. Not fade balls against man, not fade ball. Fade balls in a window against an underneath coverage like a cover two with a jam funnel player that can possibly sink. All right, or even your palms to read. All right, so force those throws. Anytime you play to read, you are always going to get, and we work this every single day. All right, anytime you play to read, you're going to get negative hole shot. Trigger, try to get to the hole shot, right? We got to defend that all the time. Okay, but go back in, in, in your film, chart your opponents, see how many times they are completing that throw. Okay, again, two other throws I want you to look at. See how many times the offense is completing that throw. All right, see how many times they're completing that throw from the pocket. Okay, and then again, I challenge you to also take a look at how many times are they completing that throw. Okay, so when we play R2 read, our corners are outside, so seven or eight depending on ability, and we're one yard outside. Our safeties are 10 or 11 by one inside here. So everybody asks me all the time, Coach, aren't you worried about post over dig? Well, yeah, I'm worried about it. Yes, we work on different ways to take that leverage away with our corner, how we do it in our shuffle. Once we open a run with one, what we're trying to do. 100% I worry about it. 
But I, what, what I worry about more is the leverage of this on the bubble or the leverage of what we're going to do in space if we get the stand-up screen and how we're going to leverage a football. Why do I worry about that more? Well, here's why. In a game that I'm coaching, in a game that we're working on, I see it more. Those passes are completed more than digs and posts. Right? So i got to worry about, yes, I know what the offense can do. Yes, I know what your middle of the field open beaters are. Yes, I know that we want to avoid explosives and we want to limit explosives and avoid the chunk plays. Right? But if the offenses don't do them well, shouldn't we force those things? So sometimes on defense, I think we got it's got to be kind of almost counterintuitive. Yes, we want to keep the ball inside in front. Yes, we don't want to get bombed on. Yes, we don't want to give up the chunk explosives. But if the offense doesn't do that or they can't do it, why don't we defend the things that they actually do? And well, when I say that, I don't mean that we give up on long balls. No, we defend the crap out of long balls. All right, we work on drills. We work on ball disruption drills. We work on out of phase a bunch. Okay, but let's just change our mindset here a little bit. Offense is changing. The throws they're making are changing. Let's try and add some coverage. Now, guys, this is one video. All right, two, two or three, we talked about cover two. We talked about some man underneath uh, to two removed, and then some full man deals with underneath cut players. Right? You could go three by one, more flooded coverages. Why? Because you want to take away underneath routes, force the ball down the field. All right, force the, force the offense to do the things that they are uncomfortable doing. Now, if you get to a point where you're giving up a bunch of long balls, you're playing a team that loves to chunk down the field, well, then you change your mindset and your game plan. I look at what we did last year on defense. We didn't give up a ton of long balls. Offenses don't chunk it a bunch. We played one or two maybe. But where we struggle is when they are underneath passers, when they are spacing concepts, when they are access throws. Because our palms and our two read and our base coverages are soft cushion coverages. So we've got to be able to challenge offenses, make them do what they don't want to do. I think that's where the game of football is every day. I think that's the chess match. I think that's where it's going. Study the NFL. Look at where the completions are being thrown now by the, some of the top quarterbacks and top passers in the league. The ball is getting thrown shorter and shorter. Get it in space. Get it to guys that can make plays. Average completions are going down. Do you still see chunks? Yes. Do you still see the moss balls? Yes. All right. But, again, I think the game's changing a little bit. I think we need to change as well. All right, so thanks to all you guys that follow PlayFast. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Turn the bell on, ring the bell, turn the notifications on. You know every time I do a video or I go on YouTube Live. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down. You like the content, don't like the content. It always helps me out. Leave a comment. If you leave a comment, I'll try and do a video. Somebody asked me yesterday about playing stacks and bunches. I'm going to try and do that video if I can. Somebody asked me the other day about more of our three high stuff. So, again, every comment that I read, if I feel like, I can do a video on a comment, then, then I'll try and do that video uh, to the best of my ability. So, all right, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments, notifications, subscribe. Thank you for everything you do for PlayFast. Hope your offseason is going well. Hope everybody out there is safe, healthy, doing well. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.